Are you ready to move abroad, but not sure how the heck to rent an apartment in a country that you've never lived in? Well, if so, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to share with you my top 11 tips on how to rent your first apartment abroad. Hi, I'm Seppi, Rhymes with Peppy from SheHitRefresh.com, and I help women age 30 and over break free from a life of routine and move abroad or travel the world long term. I myself moved from Texas to Spain in 2015, and six and a half years later, I'm still here, and I could not be more excited about my life. And I want to help you do the same. So moving abroad can be a really overwhelming process. And one of the first things you're going to have to do is find a place to live. But how do you do that if you've never lived there before? So in this video, I'm going to help you navigate this process by sharing my 11 tips to help you find your ideal place for renting abroad. So the renting process may differ from country to country, but there are plenty of steps that are the same no matter where you're moving to in the world. So I'm going to share those with you here. So keep watching because I'm going to answer all your burning questions about how to find an apartment abroad. But before we do that, I just want to give a shout out to CJ. CJ, thank you so much for commenting on my video about the four easiest countries in Europe that Americans can move to. Yes, so CJ had asked about getting dual citizenship through his Czech heritage, through his grandmother. So just wasn't sure how to approach the process and didn't want to get taken for a ride using a professional. So I answered his question there, giving him some information to make sure if he qualifies for Czech citizenship and some ways to be able to acquire Czech citizenship on his own or using a professional. So thank you so much. If you'd like me to give you a shout out, please leave a comment below and stay tuned to see if I pick your comments. And as always, please like and subscribe my channel so you don't miss out on any other move abroad information. All right, so are you ready to say goodbye to the life you know and hello to your new exciting life overseas and ready to find that apartment? Because here we go, I'm gonna get started with my 11 tips on finding your first apartment abroad. So let's do this. Okay, so the first tip here is that you need to get a feel for where you'd like to live. So you may know what city you wanna live in, but living overseas for an extended amount of time is gonna be a lot different than visiting a place as a tourist. So I highly recommend if you can before you move, go spend some time in that city that you'd like to live in, the country that you wanna to move to, max out your tourist visa. Often you usually get, especially if you're a US citizen, you can stay abroad in a country often for up to 90 days. So max out those three months, stay there for that long if you can to get a feel what it's like to really live there and live in different neighborhoods. Check out different neighborhoods, try out public transportation. If you find some neighborhoods that you like, check and see if there's gonna be everything that you're gonna need there. Are there grocery stores, pharmacies, anything that you're gonna need? If you're into restaurants and bars or those nearby, what's the social scene like? And also check and see what the noise level is like during the day and at night. I know here in Spain, they pick up the trash around two or three in the morning, it seems like. So if you're living somewhere where you're near that, you're gonna be constantly woken up at two or three in the morning. So things like that are good to know and that you can only really know once you're actually somewhere spending a significant amount of time there. So definitely do that, get a feel of where you'd like to live. So once you have an idea of where you want to live, the next step is to figure out what kind of accommodation do you want? Do you wanna live in a house? Do you wanna live in an apartment? Do you wanna live by yourself? Do you wanna have roommates? Do you wanna live in the city center or maybe in a more suburb neighborhood? So take all that into consideration when you're looking for a place. If you cringed a little when I said have a roommate, do not knock having a roommate. I think having a roommate when you move abroad is actually a really great idea. Not only does it help cut down on costs, but if you're making that move alone, you're moving to a place where you probably don't know anybody. So having a roommate in the beginning is just a great way to have kind of a built-in friend and have somebody who often is going to be someone who who is a foreigner or who just moved there as well. So someone who's gonna understand the process you're on. But in either case, definitely determine what kind of living arrangements you want so you know what to start looking for. If you are looking to buy, so maybe renting isn't what you want, maybe you know you wanna live somewhere, you wanna buy a place, I highly recommend still going to the city and renting before you buy so that again, you have a feel what the neighborhoods are like, you really understand what it's like to live there before you make that kind of financial commitment. All right, so my third tip here is to figure out your budget. So where you wanna live and how you wanna live is gonna be dependent on 
how much you want to spend and how much you can spend. So when you're figuring out your budget, you really need to understand what the market is like, where you want to live, how much is housing going to cost you there. So when you're looking at apartments and you're getting an idea of what they cost, but you also want to do your due diligence and just make sure you're not being ripped off or you're not paying really inflated foreigner prices. And so to do that, you can definitely tap into rental sites online for specific countries and cities, but also tap into Facebook expat groups. I love Facebook expat groups. And if you've watched any of my videos, I probably mentioned them in all of them. Uh, just because they're such a great resource. In there, you can find other people who are already living in the place that you wanna to move to. They already have experience with the lay of the land and they can give you some insider's information as to whether you're getting ripped off um, on a property that you're looking at or just how much something, what the range is for uh, renting an apartment in the city that you're looking to move to. So in addition to tapping into these Facebook groups and talking to expats, if you can also find a reputable realtor, they can help you to understand what a normal rental price is gonna be for a certain neighborhood that you're looking for. So also keep in mind when you're budgeting that some landlords are gonna ask for more than uh, the first month up front. So they may ask for a few months of rent up front and also a deposit. So please factor in that into your budget and your utilities as well that we'll talk about in a little bit. Also, you're going to need to account for any unexpected expenses that might come up. So definitely add that cushion in to your budget as well. Okay, tip number four, here we are. We are searching for an apartment to rent abroad. So it's time to start that apartment hunt. Depending on how long you're gonna be abroad, you can use a few different resources. So if you're just looking to go for a short-term amount of time, then definitely I think Airbnb is a great place to look. Of course, the prices are gonna be elevated on there, but in Airbnb, you can find furnished apartments and also it's just a way to kind of minimize the stress and the time it's gonna to take to find a place. So definitely check Airbnb for short-term rentals. Also, you can work with a relocation service. So if this is short-term, relocation service can also take the hassle and of having to find a place. It can help you find a furnished place for a short amount of time. So definitely tap into those resources if you're just gonna go for, let's say, less than a year, less than six months. But if you're looking to go long-term, definitely, again, tap into those Facebook groups, those expat groups for resources on, they can let you know the best sites locally where people look and lists uh, available apartments and they can also in a lot of those Facebook groups people share listings for rooms and apartments that are available so definitely again tap into those Facebook groups they can point you into the direction of where you want to look for places I know for Spain the number one site that people use for finding apartments is on idealista.es and I'll put the link below but uh, regardless of how you go for searching for an apartment one tip that I want to share is never sign anything before you see the place I know a lot of people are really anxious and just want to get their home taken care of before they move and so they may see a nice place online and sign for that and then when you get there you find out it's either nothing like what you signed off for or maybe it's in an area that isn't going to work for you it's too loud or too far or whatever the case may be so don't sign anything before you see it definitely airbnb is a great way also if you are looking to go long term but you don't have a place yet you can airbnb for a few weeks or a few months until you find your forever home or your long-term home abroad all right the fifth tip i have for you here is to prevent any apartment surprises so if you know what to look out for you can minimize those surprises when you're looking for an apartment um you know it's going to be a little different when you're moving abroad to what you're used to back home for example in europe the apartments can be a lot smaller than what we're used to in order North America. So just having that in mind will help you when you're looking for a place to know like this is the norm of where you're moving to. Also, a lot of apartments in Europe don't come with dryers. So that's something to be aware of be before you move. So understanding those kind of surprises will help you feel less confused when you're looking for a place. Also, in a lot of places in the world, especially Europe, and I mentioned Europe because this is where I live, is that a lot of the apartments are built in buildings that are quite old. So they may be over 100 years old. And that means that they may not have elevators. So just having that in mind will help you as well when you're looking for a place and knowing what to focus on or knowing that it may be a little harder to find a place with an elevator if that's what you need. Also another surprise and I think this is actually a positive and a pro is that a lot of apartments abroad are rented out furnished so that's great. I always encourage people to rent out furnished apartments because when you're moving you don't want to bring your furniture with you um, and so since it's quite easy to find furnished apartments abroad that's just a great way to, to easily find your new home. And many people do this rent furnished apartments for years before they actually buy their own furniture because you're just, you know, you're going to need a few years to get settled in your new home. I've done that. I have not bought any furniture until now and I'm in year six of living here 
in Spain. And so I have really enjoyed living in furnished apartments. Also, if you're going to be switching apartments, you don't want to have the burden of moving furniture. You know how that is. And you don't want to be doing that abroad. Okay. Tip number six is to know the required documents you're going to need to rent abroad. So just like in your home country, getting an apartment, you're going to be required to show some kind of identification. So that may be your passport, your ID card, your license, just know exactly what you're going to have to provide. Are you going to have to bring original documents? Do you have to bring copies? Also come prepared with your pay slip and bank statements. So if you don't work abroad, so let's say, you know, if I'm living in Spain and I don't work in Spain, maybe I'm working remotely uh, with a company in the US. A lot of times landlords or rental companies are going to require some kind of proof of income. And so if you're not working in the country, you're not going to maybe have a pay slip from there. So just come extra prepared with uh, your pay slip or bank statements, any documents that will be valid for them to allow you to, to live in the apartments. I would say also that if a rental property or a landlord is not asking for any kind of ID or proof of income, that could be a little red flag. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when you're looking as well. All right, tip number seven. So you need to understand what the utilities cost. I think utilities can be a huge surprise, especially electricity. So definitely look into that. It's really important to understand what the average cost is gonna be for your electric bill. And that's gonna depend on a few different things. That's gonna depend on, on how much usage there's gonna be going on in the apartment, the electric company that you use, the age and types of appliances there are in the units, and also if it's using gas or electric. And so while you're not gonna have a good reference point because you haven't lived in this country before, again, you can tap into those expat groups, ask people what the average is, but also it's not uncommon to ask your, you know, to ask the, the landlord or the rental company to see uh, utility statements, previous ones, to get a feel for what the cost would be throughout the year. Of course, take seasonal changes into account. If you're gonna be living someplace cold, you wanna definitely account for using heat a lot more in those cold months, but if it's somewhere that's gonna be hot, especially in the summer, uh, you wanna account for using uh, the AC as well. And I mean, I know electricity is going up all over the world pricing, but don't be shocked if your electric bill is a lot higher than what you're used to in the US, especially if you're coming to Europe, electricity is a lot more expensive here. So just understand that and be aware of that. Also, when you're trying to understand your utilities, make sure you know if your water's included, internet's included, or if those are gonna be uh, expenses that you're gonna have to pay outside of, of the rent that, that they're charging. And of course, when it comes down to signing the contract, just make sure it is clearly written what utilities are included so that you have it in writing and that you won't be taken advantage of at any point. And it's very clearly understood who is paying what. All right, for tip number eight, I have a little assistant here with me. So tip number eight is to find out if pets are allowed in the apartment that you're looking at. So of course, to be on the safe side, definitely talk to potential landlords and ask if pets are allowed in the unit. And also ask if there's a pet deposit required. And of course, don't be surprised if someone may raise the rent a little bit because you have a pet, but those are all things that you can talk about and that can be negotiated. And also keep in mind that a lot of landlords don't advertise if pets are allowed. A lot of times you may see that it says no pets, but sometimes it doesn't say. So it never hurts to ask if you can bring a pet into the apartment. That's what I did with my little Chloe here. Often I would just let them know I have a little five pound chihuahua. She's 11 years old. She's a really well-trained dog. I know it doesn't say that if it's pet friendly, but do you allow pets? And I've never had a problem with anyone letting me bring this little cutie with me <laughs> into their place. All right, so tip number nine here is negotiate the price. So I just mentioned briefly in the pet section about negotiation. So while you're looking for apartments, you know, most listings are gonna have the price listed there. That's gonna be their asking price, but it never hurts to ask to negotiate and and some landlords are open to negotiating depending on you know what's happening with the market, if it's a saturated market or not saturated market. And also maybe if they're guaranteed income for a lot longer. So let's say maybe you can guarantee that you wanna rent a place for X amount of years instead of just a year. So definitely talk, it never hurts to ask. The worst that someone can say is no. Definitely encourage you to ask for a price reduction before you sign on the dotted line. You never know. All right, so tip number 10 here is talking about that dotted line. So review your rental contract. Uh, so before you get the key, before you move in, you're gonna have to sign a rental agreement. So just make sure you fully understand what you're signing for. 
read through it, read every line, do not feel rushed to have to sign it. And of course, if it's in a different language, get a translator, someone you trust or professional to let you know exactly what it says. So in that contract, make sure that it confirms everything that you guys have agreed to, that it is there in writing. This includes any additional costs such as water, again, electricity, internet, who is responsible for the repairs. That's very important to know. Don't just assume like in the US, a lot of times that falls on the landlord. Make sure you know for sure if anything breaks in the apartment, who is responsible for that repair and have it in writing. If the responsibility is on you, definitely talk through that and see if you can shift that responsibility to them. That actually happened to me in a contract that someone had given me, the responsibility was on me if the refrigerator or the washer broke. Um, and I let her know about that. And she actually had just kind of pulled a contract from online that she didn't really read through and she was happy to shift that responsibility back to her. So definitely, definitely look for all of that stuff ask questions. And of course, if you're working with a realtor and not just finding something on your own, your realtor can be an advocate for you and definitely make sure that everything is in your favor so you can talk that out with them. And yes, read, read, read before you sign. I cannot stress that enough. So we have gotten to tip number 11 here for finding your first apartment abroad. And tip number 11 is understanding how you're gonna pay for your rent. So it's not gonna be complicated or it shouldn't be complicated. Yeah. Depending where you're living in the world, um, it is common to pay your rent through a bank transfer or also a lot of uh, landlords are accepting payments from platforms like Wise and PayPal, but definitely talk to the landlord. Also get that in writing, how you're going to pay for your rent. I have had the case too where landlords have asked for cash. So they wanna be you know, making money under the table, which isn't so legal for them, but sometimes you can get a discount for it in cash but I will put uh, you know, a little pink flag here that that could be risky because there isn't any paper trail for the transactions. And so it's just nice to have the paper trail of paying for things electronically so that if anything does happen, you do have that proof of payment. So definitely just be weary about paying in cash. But if you're gonna be making electronic transfers, which is what I recommend, you may need opening a local bank account where you can transfer funds from your account to your landlord's account. But also you can use companies like Wise that I just mentioned, and I'll put a link below for you where you can actually transfer money from your US account to a foreign account at a very low cost. So that's something you can do as well if you don't want to open a foreign account or be putting money into your foreign account. So definitely check out Wise. All right, now that we've gone through all 11 tips, how do you feel about renting your first apartment abroad? I mean, renting an apartment abroad does not have to be as overwhelming as it feels. So definitely I hope that you use these steps and I hope they helped you find some clarity. But of course, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer your questions. And I just wanna add, if you are are looking to move to Europe, definitely check out my guide, my ultimate visa guide. I'm out of here, an American's ultimate visa guide to living in Europe. It's a book that I wrote that outlines the 17 easiest countries in Europe to move to based on viable visa options. So it's totally feasible to move to Europe if you're an American or even if you're from any other background, definitely check out the book to see what your options are. If you're a woman age 30 and over and looking to move abroad, please join my Facebook group, She Hit Refresh, where you can find tons of resources there, inspiration, information and just meet other women like you who want to move abroad or who have done so. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, let me know in the comments below and just stay tuned so you don't miss any other move abroad, live abroad and work abroad content. Thank you so much for stopping by.